Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Steve, a Scottish wild camper, explorer, and adventurer. So if this is something you're interested in, then click the subscription button and follow me on my wild adventures around Scotland. So back in May 2023, I set out on a solo bikepacking adventure, wild camping around the North Coast 500, taking 20 days. I was also doing this for charity, the Trussell Trust, who deal with food banks and food poverty. I was raising funds for those that are finding it extremely difficult to feed themselves and their families. The North Coast 500 starts at Inverness and covers over 500 miles of the north coast of Scotland. A fairly new route that reaches some of the most incredible places in Scotland, with breathtaking scenery, views and stunning beaches. This adventure would test me physically and mentally and push me to a new level. I will be alone and will have to deal with whatever the North Coast 500 throws at me. This is the bike I will be doing my adventure on. It's a white 801 mountain bike with Ortley bags on the back at 40 litres each and Rhino Walk handlebar bags on the front. The bike itself has been serviced and prepped, ready for this adventure. This was going to be some adventure, for sure. So sit back and let me take you camping on the wild side. Good morning everyone. A little bit breezy this morning, which is okay. Um, I would probably say I've had a good a good sleep. Or not too bad I should say. Um, yeah. Got a coffee, a wee bit of flapjack this morning. I'll get some breakfast shortly tidy up and this is day si day seven day seven god I'm losing track of my days day seven on this wild adventure so I'm gonna leave here in the next hour or so and we'll get all see where our next destination is but it's not raining and that's a good thing. Okay folks, that's it for this spot. What an absolutely perfect night. Perfect day yesterday. Lovely breezy morning. <laughs> um, the resident seals are still bobbing about up in the water there, so they must be permanently here. Um, fantastic seeing the otters. Um, I'll definitely come back to this spot in, in some point. 
but uh, now it's time to get back on the bike and head for the next destination. So this is day six, day seven. <laughs> I'll get it right sometime. Day seven, so let's get going. Can't even forget the camera. So I've only come a couple of miles up the coastline from uh, St John's Point. This castle in the background there, I don't know if you can see it, is May Castle, which is spelled M-E-Y. And this is a lovely little bay. So it was here where my audio decided to play up, so apologies. This little bay sits on a very quiet coastline, just a stone's throw from St John's Point. I came across it by accident, and in true fashion as Scotland is, it was well hidden from the main road. It was nice to stop for a short time, before setting off again using the country roads. So this is what it's all about, see when you bump into like an old phone box like that, and they've converted them into book stalls. You can buy, no, not buy, you can swap or you can donate. This is absolutely brilliant. Stack the books, a little donation tin for your help in the community, lots of books. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant use of a phone box. When I was talking about these uh, flagstones that people, farmers, crofters, shepherds, all that use up this way, because this is the the sort of industry back in the day that where all your flagstones came from. So it just shows you what they actually do with them. I mean, when you see the amount of fence line that's actually covered in flagstones. It's actually quite incredible because these look like they weigh a f <laughs> They look like they weigh some weight, I'll tell you. They're big stones. So, back in the day, they must have been pretty hardy folk to use these as a, a fence line to keep their animals in or act as a windbreak of some sort. But, what an incredible. mark that they use. It's actually brilliant. They're actually everywhere. So probably just about every croft, farmer and shepherd actually has these as a fence line. And they're still standing today. So there we go. There is Dunnet Head Viewpoint, three miles which I'm going to. And when I come back out of there, I'm going to head myself to Dunnet Bay and then on to Thurzo. So let's see what Dunnet Head viewpoint is all about. This is another nice little bay on the way up to Dunnet Head. And just caught my eye. That's some of the sea life they're using the slipway. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Just a nice little bay for them to play about in. What a nice little bit to stop. Okay folks, here we are. Took a little detour of three miles. <laughs> Which doesn't seem a lot, but when you just when you're cycling, it is a lot. So here we are at Dunnet Head Lighthouse, and I'm just going to go up to the Dunnet Head viewpoint 
just up the top here. A busy little car park. And the rain's just started. A drizzle, I should say. So, oh, it was a nice cycle. A couple of hard bits in it. But that's the way it is. So, probably make a quick pace up to the top here and see what it was like. I think from St John's Point, where I was, you could probably see the big sheer cliffs away up the, the coastline. That's where we are, that's done it head. So, let's get up there. Right, roughly guys, I've come from way down in that point there. That was roughly where I was, that's, I think that's St John's Point. All drove up the drove. Sounds like I'm cheating this tour. Um, yeah, I've come all the way up here. Took a little turn in this to bring me three miles up to this lighthouse at Dunnet Head. Absolutely stunning. Well, that was the lighthouse and the trig point at Dunnethead. I'm just going to take a trip back down the road and head to Dunnet Bay. This is a, a beach and I'm looking forward to it because it looks stunning. So let's get going. Well, I've come down from Dunnet Head Lighthouse, which was amazing to be up there at one of the most northerly points of the British Isles. I think, in fact, I think it is the most northerly point in the British Isles. And taking a short cycle through the wee back streets, or the back roads, I should say, um, to the village of Dunnet, and this is Dunnet Bay. This is probably this is probably one of the nicest bays in Scotland. Ideal for young surfers there or anybody that's into surfing, bodyboarding or anything like that. Your kids can run riot in here. This is just brilliant for them. The sand's so clean. And I think that's why it gets such a good name, because it's got great clean sands. It's huge, it goes away, away around into the distance there. Someday and his dog having great fun. <laughs> Brilliant, that's what it's all about. Not so many clegs today, which is good. Um, aye, rotten things. Anyway, the beach. The beach is brilliant. Beautiful. I'm quite sure on a rough day you might get some kite surfers, which is awesome. So I'm just going to make my way along the roadside, which is at the back of these dunes. Um, it meanders away along, and I think from here, Thurso's about seven miles, seven or eight miles, I think. So that's pretty good. A nice, easy cycle into Thurso, and get a coffee break. 
uh, a lunch. Right, just taking a little pit stop because on my map, my OS map, I actually earmarked this. I'm in Dunnet Forest Walk and it's just off the main drag. Um, I just passed Dunnet Bay campsite, um, which looks lovely. And there's a big car park there for surfers and things. The campsite doesn't take tents, I think. Uh, it looks like it's just camper vans and uh, caravans. Anyway, so yeah, I dear marked this for the last resort, just in case there was backpackers and cyclists or anything that are toiling for a, a, a camp spot. I kind of Google mapped this and worst case scenario, I, I reckon you could probably well camp in here if you were pretty stealthy and leave no trace as they say. Not a bad little stop if you were really desperate for a camping spot. You can't park your cars in the car park so it's definitely for more for cyclists and backpackers, uh, hill walkers passing by. Um, either that or you could camp on the beach but pff, I, I don't know if you can or not but you need to look in for that. I don't even know if you can camp here. I'm just, I just earmarked it as a place. And if I turn the camera around, the, the, the woodage, but just on a little, you know, I'm here at a bench, but um, entrance to the woodland is just there. So you could kind of, you could kind of technically just blend away into the woods. But that's up to you. On a note, this is the, a possible place that you'd be worth Googling um, to stop if you were hill walking or walk, walking or cycling or something like that. It's a bit, bit stealthy, I should say. Um, there is people that come in here and walk around. And yeah, it's a lovely little spot. So we're not far away from Thurso, so we'll head away again and catch you there. So here is the other end of the beach. It's got some stretch on it. And you can come down to this end. And there is a car park at this end for those who want the wonder or whatever. But they're abs it's an absolutely beautiful beach. Just wanted to say a big thank you to uh, iCandy for their contribution to this North Coast 500 adventure for charity. Um, if you're in the area of Thursday, get down and see them. Um, so helpful, a great chat and lovely people. So well worth a visit. Just a wee update. I've come out of Thurso, past Scrabster I think it is. And I'm heading for my destination point. I think from Thurso it was 14 miles. So, I'm, well, I don't know how far I'm away, but it's been a busy road actually coming out of Thurso. Very busy with cars. And I felt I've stopped a few times for rest and everything. So, time's ticking away and I want to get on. So, just a little update, that's where I am. Still pushing on. What a day! What an actual day! Well... This was a tough day and... I'm finally here. I'm soaking wet. I'm shattered. I'm hungry. Pony rain. I just hope somebody doesn't tell me to move because that would just top it right off. Okay. I've just, I'm, I've got the tent up, but being the MSR Alexa, um, 
I've had to put the inside up first. I've tried to hide for the rain under a tarp for so long and well what can I say? It wasn't easy putting it up when the pressure's on when it's drizzling the rain and the inside is a bit wet. I have got a towel here which is drying it up fine but so luckily I've got that. Something I didn't want to do. I was trying to wait for the rain to stop. It did kind of <laughs> calm down a bit. This is Scotland. It fucking rains all the time. So where I am now I've got the tent inside dry. I've got the air bed up. I'm going to empty my bags one by one and sort them out so that I know what I've got so that I can get them all tidied away so I can get into my warm kit um, and get some food on the go and get a cup of tea or coffee or something because this sounds like it's on for the night and I hope it's not but I've got a good spot the ground looked a bit rough, but I actually feel it feels okay. So I have to put up with it now. Um, there's a hell of a drop, four feet in front of me here, sloping drop down to the the sea. Um, <laughs> but if it stops raining, well, I'm sure it will. That's when I'll get some footage outside. But for now. I'm going to eat this little biscuit I got with a coffee and just take a minute to soak everything in and that's literally soaking everything in <laughs> oh my god Well, I think every time I'm going to film in here at night, I'm always going to have a washing pile hanging up. I think that's just the norm now, innit? Oh, I'm so disheartened with today. <clears throat> I think it's a bit of a bomb sight in here, actually. I'm just trying to sort everything out because things are damp, things are wet, things are... I've got sort my food and everything out as well. Um, I've just cooked my dinner, which is uh, rice, and I've chucked that cured sausage in as well just to bulk it up. And after such a good day yesterday with the warm weather, um, it's been pouring the rain the last couple of hours. Um, <clears throat> I can't even get outside to film anything, so that's the way it is. Um, yeah, I feel like I just need my bed and write it off and just move on with the next day. I've sorted my bites, I've put a good top on, I'm dry, I'm warm, I'm going to get a good meal. Um, I just need to, once I've had it, I just need to sort everything out inside, get my sleeping bag sorted and just forget about the day. I'll write up my diary and it's a different day. They can't all be the same days so take the good with the bad but when we get the bad or when something doesn't go right we always dwell on it don't we? <clears throat> so anyway um, if it stops I think it has stopped raining for a while but my dinner's ready. Um, I'll see what it's like after, um, and I might do a bit of filming outside. But first, I'm so hungry, I need to eat this. 
so I'll catch you later. So yes, this is my camping spot for tonight. It's actually a fair drop down there. A cracking little bay. And it's by a cave. <laughs> a cave. <laughs> probably goes probably goes right under the <clears throat> right through and into the sea. But yeah, this is actually a big heather moor. All way out the back there. Um <clears throat> I haven't really looked at where I am but obviously further on than Thurzo um, but I'll put that on the, the screen anyway roughly where I am so we get a more ex exact point this was an actual track down here so this is a bay that you can come down and see <clears throat> They did, when I googled it, they did have a car park there, but it's all been fenced off, so I have no idea where you have to park now, um, or if you can. I didn't actually have time to look at it. But, uh, this is my sort of view out my tent window, <laughs> I should say. But anyway. I'm going back in. Because it's a bit chilly, and I need to, I need to chill out <laughs> after the day I've had. So I'll catch you soon. I've got my cup of tea and a packet of crisps. I've been fed and watered, so I really just need to. Well, I'm in the sleeping bag. I just need to drift away. It's been one of those days I just want to, I'm just knackered and tired, sleep deprivation. Um, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a, a down day now. The, the last last couple of hours of getting here has been a bit of a downer. Um, simply because I was, I'm soaking wet. I'm dry with the night clothes and things like that, but I think... Yeah, just a bit down, <clears throat> but positive side is I've had a meal and that creates energy bodily and mentally. I've got a cup of tea, packet of crisps, a little snack, something that boosts you in any way, shape or form is always good and I feel nice and cosy. So I'm not even going to bother with a hot water bottle tonight. Um, it's stopped draining. So that's a good sign. Um, yeah, it just leaves me to say... Um, I'm just going to head to sleep after my cup of tea and a little snack. I need to tidy anything up, I will. Um, just one of those days. I don't even know what to say about it, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> just knacking and getting here and then being soaking wet. Anyway, that's day seven. We're looking forward to day eight. And f might be full of surprises, but don't know. I can't even remember. <laughs> That's how good this adventure is. I planned it and I can't even remember what I've planned. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, see you there. That's just made me feel so much better. Aye. Uh, yes. A mystery tour of my own flaming doing. So, there we go. I'll leave it on that. Have a great night. See you in the morning. For day eight. <laughs>
Good morning folks. Okay, I'm a wee bit late in filming this morning. Um, I've probably been up for a couple of hours and I've just been taking it easy, having a wee talk to myself, a wee shake, um, packing some stuff away, just generally tidying up. I felt a bit low yesterday after being soaking wet and it just shows you that it does it does um, affect anybody and everybody in, in different ways. So, being wet, when you turn up in the tent, it's all... People think camping's all sunny days and nice sea. I got here and I have the MSR Elixir, as I've said, so I had to put up my inside first. So you're trying to weigh out the rain to try and pick a gap to put this up. Anyway. I've got it up and probably didn't have the best spot. It looked, looked okay at the time, but that moment in time it was pouring the rain and I made probably a bit of a quick decision and the rain probably forced that on me that I didn't want to keep searching because I was soaking wet. Time was ticking on. So all these decisions that you make are quite vital and it just shows that weather can make be a, a big in, well I'm not saying anything, a big influence on where you do or don't camp um, but I mean it was on a slight slope and I it just slid down the tent just a, just a little bit um, so I've had broken sleep again good thing on a positive it's overcast but it's there is sun breaking out through there and it's day eight <laughs> day eight so yes um, I've had a cup of coffee this morning I'm trying to get things packed because I think if it just pours down the rain everything's ready to go uh, so I've been doing all that first gonna have my porridge which is just basically apple and apple and blueberry this morning um, have one of them picked up a drink um, as well and I'm going to throw in a banana just to boost some energy so that's my breakfast this morning and I'm going to take a wee wander down to that bay which is probably 150 yards drop um, there is a path down there, um, so we'll get a wee wander before I go, but anyway, I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat. So it's definitely worth getting yourself a carabiner clip, so when you have damp bags, you can just put them through the little loop of your tent, and they just turn them inside out if they're damp inside tie them all together job done and you can do that for your jacket so I hung my jacket out like that just turned it inside out because it was pretty damp you can even do that with your gloves um, I just put a bungee tied it to the, the bike along threaded it through the fingers and tied it onto a uh, part of the bike there, so they are sitting drying in the sun as well three little tips for you there so I'm just about at the bottom of this little gully that the path leads down and if you're coming here to come and see these puffins um, decent footwear and it is a, a fair drop down there is a bit of a path but any water on that at any point is you're going to slide so not for I wouldn't say not for the, the very young children and not for um, elderly, I would say. But yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a trek down to here where this is the path down. It just seems to be a, 
the way they come round the hill there, it must be the the way the wind's bringing them in. Brilliant. I don't know if you can. I don't know if I'm picking that up or not. I hope so. Oh my God! They're so close. There's puffins there. Oh, that's amazing. And this is the cave, well more a tunnel, but that I've seen from the camp spot. How, how cool is this? <laughs> Tide will be coming in then. <clears throat> when you see things darting across the front of the camera there, it's actually puffins taking off and flying out to sea again for a feed. There's one there. This is brilliant, what a lovely little spot. Whoa, what? Look at the force of that. So I could probably sit here all day, it's, I mean it's just because it's sunny and lovely but these little guys are so entertaining, it's just, they're constantly coming back and forward. There must be literally thousands of them here. Come on. 
come into land like wee bombers with their legs down. They seem to keep coming through this gap here. Okay folks, that's it for this camp. This was very unexpected to what I seen this morning. Great encounter with puffins there. Just made my day. Um, sun's out. It's really nice and warm. And all ready to go. So let's head to the next destination. Because this is day number eight. I've got a few places to stop in between, but it's a good day for it. Welcome to Melvick Beach. This is absolutely stunning. There's a wee car park 200 yards just down the behind me here. Obviously no motorhomes are allowed to stay here. But this is absolutely stunning. And as you see there's Half a dozen surfers out there, ready to catch the wave, if I can see them. They are playing about in there, probably not very clear. And just back a bit where I've come from, I've, I've just basically come half a mile up the road from a little cafe called is it Holdale? Holdale Cafe. I had a coffee in there and uh, a bacon roll, and that's brilliant. Well worth a stop in there. There's a campsite right beside it. Uh, might be worth looking into it if you want to come up this way. But uh, yeah, that cafe, Holdale, was really good. So nice. Sit in, take away. You can even go in there for a main meal. I think it caters for the campsite as well, so yeah, you can get a main meal or a breakfast or whatever. Absolutely beautiful. No wonder this trip's taking me so long. I keep getting caught up in this beautiful. What an, this is just such, looks like such a good place to even practice. They're not huge waves, but I mean, for starting out, they're they're big, and to get the thrill of learning here would be amazing. Awesome. I've just come a wee bit further along the beach up on the main road and down another track and this is Port Skera I think that's how you pronounce it what a lovely little place very lovely little village with little 
houses dotted all over the place. Here we go with another little gem of a beach. This beach is called Strathy. Strathy Beach. Absolutely gorgeous. There's a car park here with toilets. No overnight parking, camper vans. I'm standing on a grassy patch, which is pretty decent. Doesn't say no tents or no camping. So if you wanted to, felt like you needed to pass here and places down the bottom there out the way so you're not going to get people bothering you. Absolute stunning blue sea. A guy out there surfing or trying to <laughs> enjoying his cell anyway or themselves. Just a beautiful beach, bit of sand. This location that I'm standing at now is Betty Hill's viewpoint. Look at those mountains in the distance there. Absolutely incredible. Very rugged. I'm not sure what they are at this point, but hopefully you can see them. Okay folks, I've just actually stopped at a little pub called the Far Lodge Inn or something like that, I think. Um, it's a hotel, cafe, pub kind of thing and it's right on Far Beach, F-A-R-R, -R. so this is where I am. There's a wee car park in the village, about half a dozen houses and this is the beach <coughs> and there's the rest of it. What a bonny place. Not a lot of people on it, but yet again, guys out surfing and things like that. I'm probably about a kilometre up the road, so basically I think I'm over the top of the, the skyline there somewhere. <clears throat> That's great surfing water. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. I have finally reached camp and I've set up my tent. The sun's just actually came out there now a little bit, somewhere up there anyway, a bit brighter. Um, I put my jacket on <laughs> five minutes ago because it was cooling down. Um, there is my tent location. There we can see it, I will put that there. Look at that for a setup. <laughs> Pants and socks and t-shirts, everything hanging out to dry. That'll be because I got soaked yesterday. And gives it a little bit of breather. So, yes, where am I? Where am I? See, that's Far Beach. So I've just come half a mile further on, up a little lane, down a track and along this track and camp there. Um, just out the way of everybody, to be honest. I just thought I'd keep it nice and simple um, I know it's on a track where people can walk along but I don't think, really think there's a lot of folk here but this is actually a lovely little place the surfers are still out I was thinking about bringing a fishing rod and all that with me on this trip but I thought uh, where do you stop bringing kit my socks got soaking yesterday, so I have waterproof socks. I cannot stress enough, waterproof socks are a... Just go and buy a pair. I'm not even going to say anything about them, just buy a pair. Um, they're so worth it when you're walking through boggy ground and things, and... My, my, I've hanging, I'm hanging them up to dry, uh, my old socks that were soaking. 
and these waterproof ones are just brilliant. So this is a cool little vantage point this. So today, I feel way refreshed. Um, the puffins actually made my morning. <laughs> they were staring me right in the face and I don't know why I didn't see them. I thought they were pigeons in for some stupid reason. But yes, uh, they, they just made my morning, perked me up completely. A nice sunrise, well, a nice sunny day, I should say. It wasn't much of a sunrise, it was more of a... The sun's out. But it does show you that the weather does play about with your mind and your mindset. So it's trying to stay positive. It was hard going, so it has taken a bit of toll on me. Um, that's why I had a little meal in that pub. If there was no pub there, I would have just... I've got food there anyway. But so glad I've got the tent set up. Um, the washing's been able to get dried a little bit of some sort and kick back and watch these waves. It's actually quite incredible. Okay, for my dinner tonight, something simple. Um, I had a packet. I've got a packet of noodles boiling in there, plus the last little bit of that cured sausage. I've just flung that in there just to bulk it out a little bit. Um, and while that's simmering away, just want to give a shout out to the Oban Whiskey and Fine Wine Shop for um, giving us another little can. Um, this one is Squeezies, a margarita cocktail. Um, tequila, lime, triple, salt. So another dinky little can, which is pretty cool actually. <laughs> so, give it a wee. Squeezies. That's nice. I like that. There we go, that's a nice wee can. So I'll have that along with my dinner. And uh, I've got a couple of nibbles, so there's some sweeties and some nuts as well I'll have for tonight. Sun's going down, which is really nice. And it's been a really good eventful day. Tough day getting up some of the hills um, 
but it's worked out fine. This little spot is just a nice cosy little corner watching that sea. So anyway. Once I've had this, get things squared away and sorted. Get my legs and everything sorted as well. But until that, I better get eating my dinner, because I'm hungry. Well, that's me all fed and watered. It's uh, a little bit cooler now, and that sea is still stormy. I thought it was going out, but suddenly it just started coming right in again. And uh, yeah, it was rough. And now it's calm again. Anyway, um, I'm just going to call it a night, folks. Uh, I could really do with a good sleep, so I'm going to try and get one. Fingers crossed. I've pegged everything down again. I've covered the bike with the wee tarp. So everything seems to be okay. So all prepped for my bed. <clears throat> and I think I'm ready for it. So it's been a good day, an eventful day, a hard day, and an enjoyable day is the most important thing. Um, I'm happy and I'm still smiling. <laughs> So it leaves me to say good night and I'll see you in the morning.